Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you how to create your own charcoal masks. Charcoal masks have become incredibly popular because of their cleansing abilities. First, let's clarify exactly what type of charcoal you're going to be working with and how it differs to ash and other carcinogenic substances. Ash and the leftovers of your barbecue coals are actually complexes of chemicals to enable burning, or in the case of ash, the remains of whatever was burnt. Activated charcoal, by comparison, is very pure oxygenated carbon that is very porous. Charcoal is obtained by slow heating of bamboo or other selected timbers in the absence of oxygen. Once the charcoal is created, it is then oxygenated to form activated charcoal and quality checked before being used in cosmetics. It has a very large surface area. One gram of activated charcoal has a surface area of about 890 square meters. So it is able to absorb excess sebum as well as any toxins that are released onto the skin in the form of sweat very readily. Charcoal provides very deep cleansing to skin and pores. Because of its incredible absorptive capacity, it is able to absorb environmental pollutants, sebum, even makeup and wash it away. It provides a really deep clean for those living in polluted areas, those who wear makeup regularly or those with excessively oily skin. It's commonly applied in a mask format, left on for about 15 minutes and then washed away. And it's a charcoal mask that we'll be making today. I'm going to be using quite basic equipment and materials when I put this formula together to make a very natural product that you could make at home. If you have access to more advanced lab equipment, please feel comfortable to use that. But for those of you at home or just starting out, you'll see me use some really simple solutions so that you can make this product at home as well. We are going to be creating a very low oil content emulsion today. We're going to be using what we call very high HLB emulsifiers. And we're using very high HLB emulsifiers because they love water. So we're creating a cream, we're making it very stable and we're only putting a very small amount of lipid or oil into this formulation because remember we really want this product to remove excess oil from the skin. But we can't create an emulsion if we don't put some oil in there. We also need to build in some extra stabilizing factors to help hold the charcoal in place over a two or three year extended period. We don't want the charcoal either sinking to the bottom or floating out to the top. So we need to make sure the emulsion we're creating is very stable. Lastly, I'm using an excess of emulsifiers because I want there to be a high content of cleansing agent to not only wash away the charcoal that we're applying, but also the oils, makeup or other debris from the skin when we remove the charcoal and the mask at the end of the cleaning process. And just so you can see what we're creating, here it is here, a nice viscous charcoal mask product that would be applied to the skin left on for about 15 minutes and then washed away easily. So let's get started. We're starting here this is just the water phase that we're starting with. Now I'm going to be using a lot of xanthan gum to stabilize my charcoal and the formula. So I'm going to show you a really easy method to use to incorporate xanthan gum into your water-based products without risking clumping. If you've ever tried to use xanthan gum before, you know it can clump in formulas if it's not mixed in properly. So I'm using what we call the slurry method. So I'm adding the xanthan gum to glycerin. And forming a slurry. So this is a little bit like a mud pie mix. Make sure you've got all clumps of xanthan out and you've got a smooth slurry before continuing. Next we add the slurry to water while stirring. Now 
and you'll see we've now created a nice viscous gel. This is going to help stabilize our mask and our charcoal. Next, we create our oil phase. So for this, I'm adding a high content of high HLB waxy emulsifiers. You can't build a cream without waxy emulsifiers. You need them for the body. And this was quite a viscous mask, as you saw. Next, I'm going to add a very small amount of lipid. Now I only want a small amount of lipid because remember this mask is to absorb the excess lipid from the skin. So if we put a lot of lipid into the base formula, we're going to be reducing its ability to absorb from the skin later. Now we need to heat the water gelled phase to very hot. And we're creating our emulsion slightly differently to the normal emulsion method because we've only got a very small amount of liquid lipid here. So if I was to heat this up, I risk burning the waxes, which is no good for product quality. So I'm actually going to heat the water to the melting point of the waxes and then add the waxes into the water so that they melt and emulsify in the one step. This is a similar principle we use when we make cream cleansers or conditioner products for the hair because they all contain a very small amount of liquid lipid compared to waxy substance. And again, if we were to heat that wax, we could burn or alter the waxes and that would degrade the formula. I'm now going to add my lipid phase. Remember, I'm adding the lipid phase to very hot water so that I can melt and emulsify in the one step. Now, this is very important because remember, there's such a small amount of liquid lipid that if I was to heat that waxy phase, I could damage or degrade my waxes. So I don't want to do that, so I'm melting and emulsifying in the one step. Same principle we use for cleansing creams and also hair conditioners because of the small amount of liquid lipid or liquid oil phase that they contain compared to the high waxy portion. You can use a double boiler if that helps you from uh, prevent overheating your product. And you'll see we've now created our emulsion. Now going to keep stirring that as it cools. And when it's below 40 degrees, I will add my preservative and check and adjust my pH. Now, if you want to watch a detailed explanation of how to check and adjust pH, please watch my video on pH adjustment. Because the next step after adding preservative and adjusting pH is to add our charcoal. So now here we have our cooled emulsion. Don't worry that it looks a little runny today. It will set harder by tomorrow. So we've put preservative in and preservative again is your choice. Uh, we've checked and adjusted pH to around a pH of six. So very skin friendly, also suits the charcoal. And now we're going to add our charcoal directly to this. And there you have it, your charcoal mask. Now I'm just going to show you another alternative if you have access to some other materials. And this is again using the same emulsion base. And I'm going to be using some Lipo V Detox with charcoal. So these are charcoal beads uh, and they've been encapsulated so that my emulsion will stay white but still contain charcoal. So it won't end up turning black like this one. It'll end up looking white with some beads added. So I'm just going to stir these through as well. Now these beads actually take about 24 hours to soften and I do need to take the pH slightly higher to suit the encapsulated charcoal to around 6.5 pH. As you can see when applied they break easily on the skin to reveal the charcoal inside. But it still enables me to create a different 
and quite attractive looking cleansing product with the charcoal beads. It just depends what you want to create really. The black charcoal mask or a white emulsion with the charcoal beads. Well there you have it. That's how you create your charcoal masks. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and are now ready to get formulating at home. And I've also shown you an innovative concept if you're looking for something a little different using the charcoal beads. Happy formulating!